Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, this is my Miniware TS100 soldering iron. Um, this is my main new soldering iron that I do all my repairs with, um, with quite a knackered tip on it. Uh, and the problem I've got with this guy is um, the screen on it has died. If I actually plug in a power supply, as you can see, there's nothing on the screen at all. Nothing. It does actually work. And if I press the button, that is, that's heating up. Um, so I'll unplug it now. Um, so it's fully functional, but the screen has died on it, which is rather inconvenient because I can't see what it's doing. Um, so uh, uh, at a tip-off, I bought a replacement screen from AliExpress for about $2.50. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this apart and we're going to see how hard it is to replace it. So one of the one of the popular parts of this soldering iron is that it can be disassembled and repaired and all of that. So uh, we're going to put that to the test. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I haven't looked up any guides at all. I'm just going to take it apart and see how far I can get. Has that tip gone cold? It has. Well, cold enough for me anyway. So have we got any other screws in this one? That's a, a ground screw. Does that hold the case together? I shall take it out anyway. Let's see if we can open this thing up. There we go, that's looking promising. So there's the internals of it. As you can see, it's quite a simple device really. You've got a controller in there, then there's a driver, and the tip slides in to those jacks like that and just contacts the contacts on the tip, and all the heater is in the tip itself, which is one of the party pieces of this soldering iron. Because you've got heater in the tip, it makes it very effective despite its diminutive size. So I need to get to the other side of this. So um, I wonder how I get the rest of it out. Do I need to remove those screws down the bottom, I wonder? Uh, I'm going to just try seeing if that will pull or pry. I'm not sure where I can safely pry from here. I've no doubt there's someone in the audience who knows how to take these apart and is screaming at me through the screen. I'm going to take these bits out. Yeah, that might be screwing it in. Let's take those contacts out. There we go. Cool. Right, so now, where's my tweezers? That is presumably just stuck on. Yeah, that's just on a double-sided pad. So, because this screen is broken, I'm just going to lever it up. Ooh. Nope, that didn't want to go. Do I need to cut that away, I wonder? I'm just going to try pulling it again. There we go. That did the job. Oh, it's hot barred. Sadness. I really thought that was going to be. I thought that was going to be on a ZIF connector. I'm going to need to get good with hot barring. I might actually need to come back to this because I don't have another soldering. Well, I do have another soldering iron, but I don't have one that I would trust to a hot bar with. All right, so that is a hot bar connection. So I was really hoping there was going to be a ZIF connector there, and I would literally just unlock it, put it out, plug the new screen in, and reassemble, and we'd be done. However, this is what's known as a hot bar connection. Um, so uh, yeah, this is not a huge. Oh, could I use my peasant soldering iron for that? I probably could. Oh, you know what? Sod it. I'm getting the web station back out. I've just packed that away as well because I've got a replacement for it. Right, old soldering iron is a go. I do actually have a new soldering iron on order, which should be quite an interesting model that I'm looking forward to showing you guys, but it's not here yet. Right, this tip is a bit wrecked, so let's see how this goes.
not really very practiced at doing these hot bars. What if I just get the whole side of the iron? Can we do that? Oh, there we go. That'll do it. <laughs> right, that's the old screen off. Now I'll uh, re-tin those pads. Flux. Bad flux. Using a bit of a sledgehammer tip for this. Here's hoping I don't lift any pads. There we go. Right, so we've cleaned those pads. Now we'll just lay down some fresh solder on them. This tip is garbage. All of the solder is just beading and rolling off of it. I'm going to make an attempt with what I've got. Watch me put this on upside down. Okay, so I'm going to put it on so it goes on upside down because then it's going to flip over. So let's try that. All right. That looks good. I feel like I want to put some more solder on that and just flow it all, but I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Let's turn off the soldering iron for a sec. And I think I'm going to attempt to power it on and see if it lights up. Uh, I'm going to grab some alcohol and just get rid of the excess flux first. Where is my alcohol? Okay, and I'm just going to very gently just press that there. I'm not going to press it down super hard yet. I just want it to stay in place for a sec while I power it up. Right, and there's nothing stopping me from just plugging this in now. So let me grab the let me grab my power supply. And here we go. Wah, 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 wah. Nothing. Okay. Right, I think we're quick I think we're crooked. Because on closer inspection that looks crooked to me. So let's take another swing at that. In fact, now I'm looking closer, I can clearly see that's crooked. I should have been a bit more careful about that. I kinda just was trying to go death or glory there. I shall add some more flux again. Right, second attempt. Nope, don't like that. Oh, I'm I'm butchering it. We're coming off again. I'm butchering it. Oh. Ugh. Wrong tools for the job. All right, come on, this time. There we go. Whew. 
All right, that looks good. There we go. Whew. How about that? And plug in. Yeah, there we go. It's alive. Oops, and then it popped out, but it's fine. Eh. Dinky little screens like this are just amazing. Like, look at that. See, stuff like this is just commonplace these days, but when I was a kid, that would have been pure magic. Cool. Right, reassemble time. Let's unpower, let's unpower that. Let's unplug that. So now I'm going to try and press that on for realsies. That should do. It's just got to hold it in place until I get it back in the casing. And then the casing will hold everything in place. I think we're good. And I think I keep wandering off shot because the camera's at a weird angle. Uh, screws. I'm going to put one of these screws in just to hold everything in place. There we go. That'll have to come back out in a sec to put the contact in. <clears throat> but now I can relax because it's not all going to fall out. Oh, I think I've got those the wrong way around. There we go. So there's a a contact with a with two holes in and a contact with one hole in. And the one with one hole in has got a little prong that sticks down into that hole there. There we go. Cool. Right. Let's give it another test. Looks good. Cool. Right, press button. And it's heating. There we go. That displays a slightly different colour. I'm tempted to say it doesn't quite look as nice as the original one does. But who cares? You can read the number on the screen and that's what's actually important here. It's brighter than I've seen it in a very, very long time. So the problem is, is I've, I've left this thing plugged in many times because after a while it goes to sleep automatically. Um, so it doesn't stay heated, it, but I've just left it plugged in and just standby, basically. But clearly these OLED screens have actually got a fairly short lifespan. So when you're not using these, it seems like you're best off just actually unplugging it. So it's unpowered. So uh, yeah, lesson learned. However, thankfully, it's not expensive and it's not particularly difficult. You just saw me butcher that with this big old chunky soldering iron here. So yeah, if you as long as you've got a second soldering iron to fix your first soldering iron, then you're laughing basically. So yeah, right, I'm going to let that tip cool off. Oh, I can grab it from there. These tips stay cool all the way back to about there-ish. So really easy to swap them out and carry on putting this thing back together again now. So we need to get that bit under there. 
and then I just use my tweezers to push that contact forward a little bit. There we go. Then I dropped my tweezers and we'll put these screws back in. There we go. And the top one, we just leave that loose because you tighten that screw to hold the uh, tip in place. There we go. One fixed TS100. Nice. I'm kind of pleased with that. Right, that's it. That's the video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, if you like my video, then uh, do the old subscribe thingy majig. Um, otherwise, links, support links for my Twitter, my Patreon, and my Discord are in the description down below, or hang around for the end card. See you next time. Bye.